All right. What's up, everybody? How we doing? How we doing? Let's get this chat going. Give me a 10 if you're doing great today. Give me a one if you're not doing great. I hope I don't see any ones. I generally prefer to stay above a seven. You know what I mean? Uh, but life happens and that's cool. Happy Wednesday and really nice to see a lot of your faces here. Uh, today's topic, as you may or may not know, we're going to be talking about advanced pre-treatment strategy. What does that mean? How do we execute that in our own shops? Why is that valuable for us? Some of that stuff might be kind of obvious, but it is an art. It's a little bit of art, a little bit of science here. And our man, Edsel, who you guys, most of you should know by now, he's a senior technician with Omniprint International. He's an OG of, of, the, of the crew over here. He's been, how, Edsel, how long have you been with us? Uh, I think I'm coming up on four years. Yeah, so he's, he's been around the block. Edsel is a free jet operator himself. And so he's got firsthand knowledge and experience with this whole thing. So would love for you guys to really dive in. This is a really important topic. This impacts every single operator around here and certainly every single operator on this call. And if you have staff that are operating your machinery, this is also very important for them too. The recording of this will be available, I don't know, a couple weeks, weeks time, whenever we get to it, we've got a handful up in the backlog that we need to edit down, but we do release these on our YouTube channel as well I'm on the playlist uh, creators live. So if you're not subscribed there, just go type in Omniprint International on YouTube. Um, and you can you can get that subscription rolling. But without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Edsel. Edsel's going to walk us through, and then we will do a Q&A at the end for, during the last 10 minutes or so. Sound good? All right. Thanks, everybody. Edsel, it's all you. Cool. Thank you. All right. So a lot of info I want to go through real quick with you guys. In the beginning, I'll kind of go over key points, try to kind of give you a better understanding of pre-treat, you know, and kind of what it is, why we need it. Uh, all the little details, which I think will help in your pre treat process as you move forward, you know, from there. I got a couple slides, some photos, a couple of things I want to show you that I think uh, the visuals uh, will help you a little bit better uh, rather than just a lot of talking there. So uh, first couple of things, you know, why we pre treat, we prevent excessive absorption into the fabric. You know, if anybody who has printed on a shirt that wasn't pre treated, you'll see the ink just absorbs into the shirt. You know, it doesn't work at all. I mean, that's one of the things we're trying to avoid. You know, that's why we have to apply that pre-treat. Also, some fabrics have a looser weave, you know, and because we have a looser weave, what that means is, you know, the knitting is not as tight. You know, when it's not as tight, we have to be able to fill in those gaps in order to be able to get a nice, clean print. And we'll talk a little bit about, you know, good quality shirts versus bad quality shirts and kind of the difference on, on pre-treating. So, helps fill in those gaps, a very important part of selecting your shirt. Uh, make it easier for you and it improves bonding of the ink and the garment you know when you improve that bond guess what that means you have better washability you know so that's another thing that pre-treatment can affect you know i mean not just how the print looks also how it washes and how it holds on there so pre-treat material handling uh a couple of things key points to kind of take a look into uh do not expose you know the preacher or the aerosol of the uh, of the you know the pre-treatment into your printer you know, this is something that I've seen a lot when I go visit um, customers. They'll be pre-treating here, uh, the printer is right over here, and then a year later, uh, the, pre the whole printer is rusted. You know, it'll, I mean, I've seen printers that look like they've been at the bottom of the ocean, you know, and, and they're just covered in, you know, some rust, and the pre-treatment will definitely cause some of that stuff. So that's the first thing, you know, definitely pre-treat in an area that's away from the printer, or an area that's very well ventilated, you know, if you're, especially if you're using a hand sprayer. You know, if you have a, uh, uh, one of our treater duals or a closed pre-treat machine, uh, all that stuff keeps it clean, keeps it tight, you know, so you're able to have it almost in the same room as your printer. But whenever you're using a Wagner, just kind of keep that in mind. For those of you that have used a Wagner before, I'm sure you've seen the overspray that happens, you know, from, from it blasting uh, the pre-treatment through. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, shake well. Make sure you shake your pre-treatment well, especially if it's been sitting in your shelf for a while. One thing is sort of just like the whiting, you want to keep it shake, shaking around, make sure things don't settle. That'll help prevent any clumping, you know, into your pre-treatment. For those of you that maybe have had pre-treatment sitting on the shelf for months, sometimes you may even notice a little bit of clumps in there, maybe inside around where, where you remove the cap. Uh, it, that could start happening if it does sit for quite some time, so just kind of remember uh, shake that around. Even when using my pre-treat machine, 
the, in the back, I like to stroll it around our container to make sure it's not just pulling, you know, settled pre-treatment. So kind of, you know, always keep that in mind. Make sure you want you, you want to get your pre-treatment moving every once in a while, especially before using it on your pre-treat machine or even on your, on your Wagner. General, your pre-treat maintenance. So this is one thing, especially with pre-treat machines. Make sure you're flushing those machines very good. You know, whether that's with our flush solution or if that's even with distilled water. One of the things that happens a lot, and I hear it a lot, is they show me a photo of their of their image and I say, hey, you just didn't pre-treat enough. Um, it's not even. And their reply to me is, but I use the machine. Right? Even though you're using a machine, it's still possible that you know it can fail. You know, so always keep an eye on that spray pattern. You know, sometimes people don't notice that, hey, down the middle, it's not spraying anything. And then, you know, as you're printing, you realize, hey, you know, something's going on. So keep an eye on that nozzle, you know, and if you want it to last the longest, just make sure you're flushing it. Consistently flush it through really good. That way you can prevent, you know, from replacing these little guys, you know. So always keep one in stock, keep a couple in stock. In fact, for myself, even me, you know, as a senior technician, uh, they get a little bit clogged up for me at home as well. You know, so I always keep them there and I always just swap it out if I need to. But make sure you're flushing it really good. You know, just because it's a machine doesn't mean it's always going to come out perfect. You know, those little things can affect it and always check your pattern. You know, don't just assume because I hit, you know, spray that it came out perfect, you know, on there. Uh, make sure that actually when it comes out that it's a nice even pattern in there. So it can easily, you know, get away from you, but just kind of check up on that. You'll be able to see it. Same thing in there, you know, we also have like a little check valve, a little filter in there. Pretty much a mesh, you know, mesh filter. Uh, keep an eye on that guy too. You know, it's meant to catch all that clumping, anything that dries up in there so that it doesn't clog up your nozzle. So, you know, people will forget about this guy, you know? So as soon as when you remove your nozzle assembly, this guy's in there. Most of the time it'll fall out on its own. If not, you just kind of pick it out and you're able to get this guy all the way through. Clean it up, wipe it down, don't forget about it. And we do have the uh, video for, for our treater duel that shows you how to remove that, shows you how to take that out, and it shows you how to clean it up real good. So that's one thing, you know, good maintenance will, will prevent you from replacing that stuff, will prevent you from, you know, messing up on shirts, little things like that. So and then on your Wagner gun, very easy, you know, this is a little bit easier. Just fill it up with water. And what I do here is I just start spraying out all the water Try to get all that pre-treatment. This one's, you know, most of this is all plastic assembly. You really don't get much rusting or clogging in these. But there is no filter, you know, on these Wagners. So that's when you want to make sure you shake things around to prevent any clumping from shooting out. You know, anybody has used a Wagner in the past with old clumpy pre-treat, I'm sure you've been spraying and then you sprays out little clumps, you know, onto your shirt. So, you know, avoid that by shaking your pre-treat. Make sure you keep your maintenance on this stuff. Make sure you're flushing it good. You know, you can prevent your uh, nozzles from drying up. You can prevent your filter from clogging up in there. If not, you know, you will be replacing, you know, that nozzle all the time. They are, you know, not very expensive, but, you know, obviously when you're, you know, in the middle of a run, you're trying to get things done, it can be very annoying if that nozzle is not spraying very well. So that's one of the things I always like to keep a couple extra in stock, kind of helps avoid downtime, things like that. Other than that, flush it real good. You know, those nozzles will last, you know, some time. A couple slides that I'm gonna go over on a little bit of some troubleshooting for you guys. Kind of go over it's similar slides that I actually cut a lot of this stuff off from the information I use to train the technicians. You know, so some of this info, you know, are from those little documents. So, you know, lack of pre-treatment will produce a bad print colors and white ink will not be solid. So this is one of the main, main things with pre-treatment is this is what happens. As you see in that shirt, it, they just absorbed into it. You know, that's because I was lacking pre-treatment. There just wasn't enough. Uh, and that could have been from various things. You know, it could have been from the nozzle not firing good. It could have been from maybe spraying too fast with my Wagner. You know, a couple of those things will happen. You will see significant loss of color and ink and vibrancy during the first wash. So, you know, if it looks this bad already, you know, as soon as you wash it, it's going to be even worse, you know. So make sure, you know, we are applying enough. And this is kind of a good visual of showing you uh, when you don't have enough. Sometimes, you know, you may get a corner that look like that. You know, maybe we missed a pre-treat area or it was just light in those areas. So you want to make sure you keep an eye on that. You want to make sure 
uh, you are spraying enough of the area that you need or even a little bit bigger to avoid missing you know anything there too much pre-treatment again here's a little diagram on the left you'll see this little wiggly line going up and down that represents the weave of the shirts and you know when you apply pre-treatment it fills in those gaps in there which then gives the ink a nice even flat surface to to lay you know the ink on and when you apply too much though sometimes you know the image on the right you'll see now that pre-treatment layer is much thicker you can see it's going above you know the weave of the shirts creating a really thick layer and then when i print my white ink on top of that now it's you know there's a thick layer of pre-treatment in between and it's not going to allow this white ink to bond very well, you know, to the shirt. So, you know, applying an excessive amount, you know, may result in a good print, but you know, when you try to go wash it, you know, the, that ink is just too far away from, you know, the fabric because we built such a thick layer of pre-treat that it's not going to bond very well, you know, so kind of keep, keep a little bit of, of an eye for that, you know, don't apply too much to avoid, you know, washing issues. So, uh, it can also, like I said, affect your washability uh, on some of these. So too much, like I said, could give you a good print, but then you may run into bonding issues, washing issues with this. So too much, you know, again, another thing to look out for when you're applying too much is crystallization. You know, the most common mistake is not adding enough pre-treatment, but another issue is you may see when you add too much is crystallizing, you know, and, and some of you guys may have seen on some of this, when you apply too much and then you apply heat and pressure at the same time, you'll actually start to burn it. It almost starts to instantly almost like boil. And you'll even hear, you know, your heat press start to like almost sizzle, you know, from just all that moisture just burning up. And then you open up your heat press and boom, you know, you have this huge layer of pre-treatment that ended up crystallizing, you know, and and this can happen with whether you're using your Wagoner, whether you're using your direct treat or dual, applying too much, you know, and, and then applying the pressure and the heat will crystallize. So now for the most part, you know, this will wash off. You know, if you see this, it'll, it'll, it'll wash off. Although obviously, you know, I mean, if you're working in a retail shop or a store, you know, this isn't retail already. You're not going to be able to hang it up on your shelf right away. You don't want to get rid of that crystallization. So to avoid this, make sure you don't spray too much. And as you go through shirts, you know, some shirts, we'll talk a little bit more about the quality. Some shirts will require a little bit more, some will require a little bit less. And you kind of have to figure that out based on the quality of the shirt, you know, that, that we're using. So, but again, crystallization is a result of having too much pre-treatment on this. Just some more uh, visuals for you guys. Besides getting crystallization, adding too much pre-treat can result in bad wash. Just how I mentioned earlier, adding that thick layer of pre-treat in there you know, will prevent that ink from actually sticking well to the shirt. You know, you just are creating a huge, huge thick layer and the print may look good, like I said, but it's not actually bonding very well to the actual shirt. So make sure, you know, we aren't putting too much because again, too much will result in crystallization or even cracking and peeling of the print, you know, within two washes, three washes, you can start seeing this, you know, and again, it's, it's just because there's just too much pre-treatment in there. And it's just not allowing the actual ink to stick, you know, to the shirt. So keep an eye on that. You know, don't put too much into it. That way you can avoid these little washing issues, even the crystallization, you know, issue there. So you can see these are actually some photos that customers have sent me where they've had this issue, you know. And again, too much pre-treatment, you know, can start causing this. You know, also, you know, things like not curing the ink properly can also cause it. T-shirts, you know, quality can also cause it. Again, we'll go over a little bit, touch a little bit on those uh, as we move ahead. But these are some nice visuals of kind of some results that you, that you could see. You know, the type of garment I'm both washing and it also relates to how easy pre-treating is going to be. Like I always tell customers, I'm like, make it easy on yourself and get a shirt that's going to be easy to pre-treat. You know, that way you start off good and it's much easier to get a nicer print out of it. So... Although it may seem like all shirts are the same, we must also take into consideration what the shirts are made out of, the quality of the garment. Both can heavily influence how the ink holds in the washes. So again, not all shirts are the same. And I'm sure from you guys, you know, if you've tried different fabrics, different types of brands, I'm sure you've noticed on some brands it's easier to pre-treat, on some brands it's easier to get a good white layer, on some brands it's not, you know? So not every shirt is the same, you know, we'll stick 
try to stick to something you know that works, try to stick something that you know makes it easier for yourself, you know? The type of garments to avoid, you know, any garment that is waterproof will not wash well. You know, we're using water-based things, we're using water-based products. You don't want to use anything that's waterproof. You know, that stuff is just not going to work. Avoid garments that have coatings like silicone coats, anti-stain guards, waterproof coatings. Sometimes, you know, these, these companies will wash them with silicone coats, you know, these type of coatings to avoid uh, staining, to avoid, you know, to kind of make, you know, any liquids just kind of run off of it, to kind of, you know, make it keep it nice and clean. Those type of, you know, shirts are not going to work very well or really at all with, with their machine. You know, you may be able to get a decent print off of it, but then remember, these things still have to get washed, you know, and once they get washed, that's where you may have some issues. So try to avoid, you know, little things like that. Those are usually very special type of garments, but we've come across them quite a bit sometimes with customers because a certain client wants a very specific shirt, a very specific brand, and it ends up being, you know, that it has some sort of silicone coating or some sort of coating on the shirt, and it's not allowing, you know, the ink to actually bond you know, very well. So kind of look at that. I always look at the info. You know, if you're ordering a, a shirt that you already know uh, works well, that you've used in the past, continue using it. If it's something new, uh, look at that description. You know, sometimes people forget to look at the description to see what it's made out of, what it contains, uh, things like that. You'll see it all uh, when you're purchasing that shirt, uh, if it is coated with anything or not. A cheaper, lower quality shirt will yield less washes due to quality of the fabric. So the quality, besides you know, making it easier to pre-treat will also help with that, the holding and the washability of it, you know? And, and for me, most of it is, it's gonna be, it's just much easier to pre-treat. You know, when you're using a ring sponge shirt, when you're using versus let's say a comb cotton shirt, you'll notice it, for those of you that are using a pre-treat machine, you know, once you're switching from different quality shirts, you'll notice that that same level that you're punching these other ones may not work very well for this one, or it looks different, you know, it looks like there's actually less on it, you know? So that's one thing I always tell customers, make it easy for yourself, you know, buy yourself a nice shirt, buy yourself a, a nice high quality shirt, um, and then the whole process will be much easier, you know, as far as the preaching, as far as even the curing, or even how it washes, you know? So good quality shirt, you know, will make this whole process, you know, much easier. There. We talked a little bit about, you know, they'll ask us what type of shirt. One thing that I do like to always recommend is a ring sponge shirt. You know, I think it's, it's a nice soft shirt. It's a nice a high quality shirt versus let's say a comb carded, you know, a comb cotton shirt, uh, which are usually the little bit more uh, cheaper shirts that you, that you see. So, uh, and same thing with that, you know, you'll see that in, in your description, whether it's ring sponge, comb cotton, uh, it'll be much softer. Ring sponge shirts are usually a much tighter and cleaner weave, you know, versus a, a comb cotton shirt. It feels better on the body. On top of that, I had mentioned, it pre-treats much easier, which is one thing that I like. Higher quality shirts also require a little bit less pre-treatment, you know, so you'll even be saving a little bit more on costs, you know, because you're having to spray a little bit less on a, on a better shirt. Now they're they're more affordable, more accessible. When, you know, when this stuff first came out years ago, it was, it, it was very expensive. But now, you know, a lot of these companies are uh, having really affordable prices, really good ones. Um, Bella Canvas is, you know, is one of them that, you know, I love, I love to use all the time. Uh, it works great, you know, on there. So keep, keep an eye on those. Get yourself a nice shirt. Makes it much, the whole process much, much, much easier. And then here's a little visual, you know, kind of what a, you know, a comb cotton shirt versus, you know, a ring sponge shirt, you know, a comb cotton shirt. Uh, it's very messy, you know, it's very hairy. There's a lot of fibers on it, and I'm sure you've even gotten shirts that are, uh, that have a lot of fibers on it, a lot of it sticking out. Versus a ring sponge shirt, it's a much cleaner fiber, you know. All of that will make this whole process much easier, especially your pre-treating. You know, when you're pre-treating on a comb cotton shirt, look, we have to fill in all those gaps on the left side to, you know, really good in there versus, you know, on the right. It's a much neater, you know, weave on there and it's much easier to get pre-treated into these areas. It's much easier to get a nice even coat because there's less fibers sticking out. Those fibers can be a pain when you're, you know, when you're printing, you know, they can also give you some issues with your print quality. So just a quick visual of, you know, kind of the difference for, for, you know, each little thread and what it does there. And then same thing on the next slide, you'll actually see a printed, you know, display. You know, you can see one where it is, 
Gonkine shirt versus a, a ring sponge shirt. The print just looks much cleaner, you know, on, on, a, on a ring sponge shirt. Both look nice, it's a nice white, you know, but you can clearly see on the left, you know, on the ring sponge shirt, I have less of those hairs sticking up, you know, I have less of that stuff getting in my way. Uh, and it gives you a much cleaner, you know, and crisp print. And you can even see the actual fabric, you know, when you zoom in real close to the fabric, you can see how much cleaner that ring spun, you know, is. And again, all of this helps the whole process. All of it will make the pre-treatment easier, you know, which means you're gonna have a better coating, which means your, your white's gonna be more even, which means it's gonna give you a bright color on top. So, you know, starting from the beginning, you know, with a nice shirt, will help the whole process, you know, mu uh, much better, you know, as you move forward. But next, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about the, the pre-treatment box. You know, I think sometimes people will see staining, people may see the spray area, you know, that you sprayed. And, you know, I think this is something that, you know, has been notoriously happened in DTG for, you know, since the start. You know, when I started doing this a little over 10 years ago, um, it was happening then you know, it's still happening now. There's a lot of different variables, you know, that come into play when you're dealing with you know, the pre-treatment box or that stain, you know, onto the shirt. You know, one is garment selection. You know, again, going back to the garment, you know, not all of them are the same, you know, they're not all going to react positive with our pre-treatment. You know, every single company dyes their shirt differently. Every single company uses different enzymes to wash your shirts at the end. So little things like that, can affect that stain. So try to stick to something we know. You know, um, we have a couple of different brands that we all, you know, we kind of try to stick to. But once you start to go into a brand that you've never done or a customer wants this, you know, it's always a testing, a little quick test to see if the normal setting is gonna work. You know, if it's not gonna work, start adjusting. And now usually when you start to see a stain, it is because it's too much. You know, it is because it's a little bit too much pre-treatment and it's just really thick, you know, really concentrated. And then when it dries on the fabric, it actually dries darker, you know, and you'll see that stain, you know, around there. So be a little careful, you know, usually if it is, you know, if you are applying too much, you will get that you know, pre-treat box. One of the things that I'll do, whether I'm using the Wagoner or I'm using the, uh, uh, the dual treater is I try to build it up lightly, you know, so I kind of do like a level one, spray it you know, look at my shirt, see how it is, you know, okay, it looks like, you know, I need to put a little bit more and I'll hit it again, you know, level one, and then kind of see it. Uh, Cause if you start off very heavy at, right away, you'll get to a point, you know, that first shot, then once you put too much, then, you know, you can't take some away, you know? So I do like to slightly build it up, especially when I'm dealing with, you know, shirts that I've never worked with. Sometimes customers bring me, you know, a hundred dollar jacket and you're sitting there like, oh man, how am I going to pre-treat this, you know? So, and I like to kind of slowly, you know, build it up instead of just blasting it, you know, right away. So, and as you kind of start dealing with different fabrics, you know, different brands, you know, you'll be able to pick up a shirt and say, hey, this is sort of like the Bella. I think I'm gonna try, you know, that Bella setting real quick versus let's say a, a really cheap gilding. I have to pump way more pre-treat into that versus, you know, one of our Spectra shirts. You know, if I pump the same amount that I did on that, it's gonna be way too much on this ring sponge shirt. But I know this ring sponge shirt is similar to a Bella, similar to a Next Level, so I'm able to kind of work my setting off of you know that previous experience that I've had with some of these. So always take a look at it. You know, I think you know, for the most of once you get experience, you'll be able to see how much you need to pre-treat or I kind of where I need to start on there. Julian said, "Do you dry the pre-treat between your light layers?" I don't. You know, one of the, so when I'm talking about building up that light layer, it's just kind of to find the right amount of pre to apply first, you know? So I kind of do like a light layer. I look at it, say, you know, it needs a little bit more, spray it again. If you just pack a whole bunch, then you'll get to a point where, you know, now you can't take some off. So I mostly do it to find my level or to see how it's gonna react to the shirt. You know, if, if I see that it's very heavy at that light level, then I know I'm not gonna be packing more, you know, into it. But if I see it and I say, hey, it looks like I'm gonna need some more in there, then I'll just pack a little bit more, another spray onto it. So it's really just for me to find the mount that looks correct on this shirt. Hovering the heat press, another good technique for, you know, drying that. So sometimes people do spray too much. You know, sometimes people do spray too much. They blast the gun, they blast, you know, their pre treating machine. And one of the things you can do is actually hover your heat platen 
over the that pre treated area. And what it'll do is it'll kind of start evaporating some of that excess moisture. And this will also help with that crystallization. And imagine I just packed a lot of it and I was like, oh, that was a mistake. I don't want to burn this shirt up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually just gonna hover my heat press over my you know, shirt and I'm gonna let that warm it up. I'm gonna let that evaporate some of that excess before I actually start clamping it down. You know, so sometimes that happens. You know, sometimes you do spray too much. You know, you have the wrong setting, you forgot, and you know, you don't wanna mess up that shirt. So that's one of the a good technique to avoid, you know, burning up or crystallizing or even getting that stain is hovering before. Uh, once you get the perfect, you know, uh, mount in there, you can kind of avoid, you know, hovering. Although that is a very good technique that I do always like to use to really, you know, avoid some of that, some of that staining. Client communication, you know, this is another one. I, I had a customer bring me uh, a shirt, some shirts that I've never worked with. And the first one that I did, I told her, hey, let me try it out. The first one that I did, it stained, you know, this is, this was a really weird shirt that she had, she had, she had brought me that were, you know, for a team. And right away, I told her, hey, and uh, it's not working for me. You know, I said, hey, this is uh, what it's not reacting good. It's pre you know, it's staining in there. Uh, communication is key. You know, she, she in the end said it was all right. She ended up taking it, you know, at the job. But of course, I didn't want to run that job, you know, and have negative feedback because, uh, because it's a shirt that I've never used. I generally don't like to take clients' shirts. And, you know, this is the reason why, because either they'll have shirts that you know, you've never worked with, they'll have shirts that will react differently. And then, you know, you're, you look bad because you're not able to do it because you accepted it. So, you know, choose your battles sometimes, you know what I mean? In that time I ended up having to do it. It was a big pain for me. And at the end, I really wish I didn't, I hadn't taken it. But, you know, kind of communication with customers, sometimes they try to give you that. Um, if it's not gonna work, uh, it's not gonna work. You know, let's, uh, let's use something that works. Let's try to find alternatives try to find something that, that'll work. Uh, and then the last one, as far as, you know, if you're, if you're having to do stain, you know, some of that staining, uh, now that we have our DTF kits, our DTF stuff, that's a good alternative to, you know, avoid having to pre-treat a garment that is just now reacting good with the pre-treatment. You know, the DTF, the direct-to-transfer films that we're using don't require pre-treat. You know, so, you know, it is a good alternative for those type of shirts, for those type of garments that you know uh, that you know are tricky that you know the preacher is not reacting good or the customer absolutely wants this one and you know if the better option may be DTF so keep those keep those options open you know and now that I, we're doing DTF I do the same thing there was things there was garments that I just didn't want to accept because they didn't preach it very well or I couldn't heat them up for you know 90 seconds you know because they were just burning up so the DTF was a good option for me to now, you know, accept those extra garments. Um, and I, you know, so it's it's a good little option. And I, for those of you that haven't tried it, uh, I encourage you guys to try the, you know, the, our DTF kit. Works great, you know, and I think you will, uh, you will love it. Quick, you know, I'll go over quickly on the hand spray application. I think most of you are using Direct Treater Duals, so I'll go over a little bit on the Direct Treater Dual towards the end. For those of you that are using the Wagner, I don't think a lot of people are using Wagner nowadays, but. 10 years ago when, when I started this, there was no preaching machines. This is all we had. And you know, we had to figure out how to spray everything perfect and right when you're using you know, these Wagner. So a couple of things that you know, we'll go over is, one is distance. For those of you that are, you know, using the, are using the Wagner, distance is important when you're spraying this. Obviously too far away, you'll get a mist. It's not gonna saturate very well. Too close, you know, it's gonna saturate instantly and it's just gonna burn, you know, right off. So kind of keep that, you know, the distance in mind. I usually do about a foot, you know, from here and just kind of move, you know, my way across. Besides the distance that we're gonna see is also the speed. You know, sometimes people say, well, I did the hashtag, I did the hashtag, you know. Also, it depends how fast you do the hashtag. You know, sometimes people move their hands really fast and when you're moving really fast, guess what, you're not gonna get that much on there. You know, if you're moving way too slow, it's going to oversaturate, you know, so kind of find that flow rate and how fast you need to move your hand nice and steady across, you know, up and down. So sometimes people, you know, will say, well, I did the hashtag and it's still not good. Well, let's slow it down. Let's make sure we are spraying enough. Not everyone sprays the same speed 
you know, so you kind of have to go off for your flow rate on your Wagner here. So, and you do have a, a flow rate adjustment on the trigger itself. So that's one thing you can have it blast a lot heavier if you need to, uh, which, you know, the more you blast, the faster you're going to have to move your arm. You can also wind it down and you'll actually be doing less spray out of it, which will require you to move your hand a little bit slower, you know? So all this, you know, all the combos of everything will tell you how fast, how far away you need to start spraying with these. I'd say for sure, the biggest learning curve uh, is gonna be spraying with the Wagner, uh, practicing. The biggest mistakes that I see with it is not spraying enough because they're moving too fast or they're just spraying at a very far distance, which doesn't saturate it, you know, very well. Or they're just moving their hands so fast, they get areas that are just really light. And then you'll be able to see that when you're printing your shirt uh, on your white layer. So keep that in mind from that. For the Wagner, I think for the most part, you know, pretty simple. Find your flow rate. If it's pumping too much, that means you gotta go faster. Adjust it if you need to. You'll see a little plus, a little minus sign on there, and it'll help flow. For those of you who are using the preaching machine, you probably never even open this guy, you know? So, but it's a good backup. One of the things that I do is I tell everybody, learn how to use this because the worst thing is, imagine your preaching machine goes down. I always tell a guy, hey, take out that Wagner. Let's start using the Wagner. And then they tell me, oh, well, I skipped that part in training because I didn't need it, right? And then now, you know, you don't know how to use the Wagner. It's a great tool and it's a really nice backup if for whatever reason your Wagner is down, this is a really nice one. I have it at home, you know, and it's a good backup. I've had to whip it out a couple of times and it's, you know, saved me quite a few times. So I don't know, don't, don't just forget about it. I do, you know, um, sometimes tell the guys, hey, go ahead and uh, learn how to use this just in case, you know, you need to, you know, take that guy out. All right, lastly is the uh, Direct Treater Duel. You know, real quick, a lot of benefits to using the direct treater dual eliminates a lot of the guesswork when you're using the Wagner. Speed, much faster to spray these versus, you know, doing the hashtag, figuring it out, how fast to do it. Very easy. You know, that's one thing that I love about my machine. Slap the shirt on there, find the level that I've been using already, click one button, you know, sprays it right away. Back in the day, we never had those. You know, we always had to use the Wagner, which is not, you know, sometimes a little bit messy. Uh, consistency, that's another one. You know, if you have multiple employees that are pre-treating, sometimes when you're using, they're using a Wagner, you know, uh, one employee can be spraying more than the other, which means the quality will change, you know? And so when you're using a pre-treat machine, you're, you're having consistent, you know, every single time, every single shift, the next guy that comes is going to hit that button. And it's going to be the same amount as the last guy. Uh, you can save your parameters. You know, that's another thing, you know, when you're using a Wagner, to say, all right, well, this is how fast I need to go for Gildan. And then a month from now, you got to remember how fast you were going again, you know, to make sure you have the right amount. You know, when you're using a direct treater dual, you can save these settings. I mean, you can save the setting and call it Gildan. You know, you save it and uh, say it's this, say it's that. Or just know, you know, save file number one is going to be for a Gildan shirt. So you're able to save these settings already. And just click on it, loads it up, and then, you know, just to start spraying. And again, it just helps that guesswork. Much cleaner, you know, everything's enclosed. When you're using this guy, there's a lot of overspray, spraying everywhere. It's a much cleaner, you know, um, much cleaner spray, much cleaner area than using, you know, Wagner. So that's one thing that I love about it. Another thing I had mentioned earlier, just keep an eye on that nozzle. You know, just because it's a pre tree machine, just because you hear machine, doesn't mean it's gonna be perfect every single time. You know, you still have to make sure you're flushing out that machine to make sure your filter and your nozzle is spraying good. I don't know how many times I have told them, hey, it's your pre tree pattern. And literally the reply is, but I have a machine. You know, and I just, I don't get that reply. You know, it's, it, it, it'll still clog up. So just kind of keep in mind, always check that pattern. You know, make sure it's a nice even pattern as it comes out of your pre tree machine. That way if there's a problem, you're able to identify it, you know, right away and not have to waste ink, waste a shirt or anything like that. And again, if you're using a new type of garment, Test, you know, don't be afraid to do it lightly. Don't be afraid to see how it reacts to it. I always ask if a customer is bringing me something new, I'll ask them for extras. Hey, bring me two or three just real quick so I can do a quick test, make sure everything's good. Don't be afraid to, you know, spray it and see how it looks, you know? And then after a while, like I said, you'll recognize 
the quality. You know, you'll you'll look at her shirt, you'll say, this looks like a Bella, this looks like a next level. Uh, it feels like it, so I'm gonna start, you know, with that level. And as you build your knowledge, there won't be that much guessing, you know, when you're when you're doing your uh, your pre-treat levels. You know, you'll know for this type of quality, for this type, or it looks like my Bella, I'm able to choose my Bella setting, you know, on that. So use that past knowledge, you know, get rec you know, recognize how this stuff feels. And I think the whole process is gonna be, you know, much easier, you know, for you to um, to go through it um, from there. So I think I'll go into, I think a little bit of the q and I've been talking a lot. I think I went over my time. So let's, uh, let's go to get Great information, man. Um, and it's super applicable. So I know you guys have some questions. Let's start firing up the Q and A real quick. It could be regarding pre-treat. You just have a general question for Edsel. Let's see, it's a quick one. It says, "How many sets of settings can be saved in a dual machine?" I believe it's four. I believe it's four. I'll check, uh, but I believe it is four. And you are able to set them up and save it. You save it right there and just um, lo reload it back up. Uh, one thing when you do save these settings, if you do start saving them, make sure you power off your dual the correct way by shutting, hitting the shutdown button and everything. Because if you just, let's say, save these settings, you go to the back and you just shut off your, you shut off your, um, your dual, your preaching machine, none of that stuff saves. You know, so sometimes people have been telling me that they've been loading it up, but it turns out that they weren't properly shutting down the unit, they were just picking the switch and it wasn't saving that stuff. So it's a good little uh, technique and, and try to use it. I got another one here, Edsel. Do we have a list oh, of cool. the best brands and styles of shirts that we recommend for the free jet? Yeah, oh yeah, so we have a, a little list. I'll try, I'll send that to you, uh, Ryan. We can, we can share it with, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll put it on the Facebook as well. But it's uh, the main ones that I'm sure most of you guys are already using. And, you know, we do have a little list of those that are, and even some that I've put on there that I've done myself, you know, they work great. So it's a good amount, maybe like 10 or 15 of them. So it's not like you're just limited to two or three brands. Uh, it is quite a, you know, quite a, a list that, you know, we've gone through and um, work, you know, well. So I'll, I'll send that to you, Ryan, and then we can, uh, we can share that with everybody. Perfect. How do you save the name Save and how do you save and name the settings? When you are, I don't have my dual here, but when you are in your dual, you're gonna see a little uh, floppy disk. And when you hit on that floppy disk, it'll ask you, you know, you'll start to go through the saving process. And like I said, there's four different ones you can you can save, but that's it. You'll see that little save floppy disk up there and you'll be able to just click on it and uh, save save your setting there. Perfect, can you use a belt dryer to dry the pre-treat? Yes, oh yeah, yeah, so you definitely can use a belt, a conveyor dryer, and for those of you that screen print or may have one of our, our dryers. When we're running, you know, multiple machines or a big job, we do run them through a tunnel dryer, so. And one of the things we'll do is, I don't like to fully dry the pre-treat on the dryer. One of the things I'll do is I'll run it to a point where by the time it comes out, it's still a little wet and I just press it for about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. No matter what, you will have to press it at the end. You know, you're gonna want to fly down those fibers. You wanna make sure everything is nice and even across. Especially if you're using a uh, one of our forced air dryers, it's blasting air through it, so some of those fibers can stick up. And like I said, I usually like to run it to the point where it comes out a little bit wet and at the end, I just press it for about 10 seconds and um, finish it off. When using the dual treater, what settings do you suggest for Bella shirts um, and Next Level and Gildan? Bella and Next Level are gonna be very similar. I see somebody had commented that they're spraying for Next Level, they do level one both directions, which is uh, I think a little bit over about 30 grams, which is a good, you know, a good amount. I like to, actually spray a little bit less, you know, onto it, just maybe like a level five or level four on there to, you know, have a nice even. You have to remember also, those are a little bit lighter shirts. So if you spray too much, then the shirt kind of feels a little bit heavy. Uh, one of the things about uh, the comment of level one, spraying in both directions, spraying in two directions or, you know, a two pass, you get a, a much cleaner and even coat, you know, versus uh, just one blast through it. So like, let's say level one, both directions uh, is about the similar amount of spraying level eight, level seven, in just one direction. But spraying it two times, you know, gets you that even coat. It's just like if you spray painting a car, 
Are you gonna do one call? Are you gonna hit it light? Boom, hit it again. You know, and you get a much cleaner pass, you know, much cleaner fill in there. So that's one thing about spraying both directions. I just wanna to touch about that. It, it's a good thing spraying in two directions. But for those I like to do around those levels for Gildan, that's when I definitely am I'm, I'm hitting it twice. You know, either level one twice or even a level two, two times. You know, the Gildan, uh, those Gildan cheaper shirts, I do notice I have to spray a little bit more on them to make them, you know, to get the same quality as I would on a Bella or on a next level. Uh, that's kind of the one that I generally try to stay away. A lot of people like to use them because they're cheaper. And uh, once you have really good experience with pre-treating, for those of you that are, you know, been doing it for years, you can make any shirt work. You know, you can, you'll, you'll know what, how much to spray, how much you need to do. But make it easy on yourself, kind of build that knowledge first before you just start tackling anything on there. And Gildan, I think is one, especially once you go into the 50-50 Gildans, I really, you know, dislike the 50-50 Gildans um, out of pretty much all the shirts uh, that they, you know, that, that anybody sells. Thank you, sir. Fly Guy Eli, which I love that freaking name. Thank you for whoever that is. Can you heat press the t-shirt too much to where the pre-treat messes up? Not necessarily. Like I said, the the biggest issue you're gonna get is the crystallizing. You know, if if you do, let's say, spray too much or you're just burning it up, your print can still come out good. You're just gonna get nasty look around it. Some shirts, you know, you don't wanna heat up too much. You may start to burn up. You know, that's really mostly what you're gonna get. Or you would have to have heated up, like let's say for a ton of dryer, if I run it for too long, then in that case, it almost like evaporates and burns too much of the pre-treat off. But on a general, on a heat press, I haven't really seen the heat press, you know, um, if you have enough on there, or even more than enough, the most you're gonna get is, is really just um, crystallization or just some really nasty look, you know, around your shirt. Mm -hmm. All right, one more here. If you think that you put down too much treatment can you wash the shirt and hand dry it and redo it with new treatment yes so yeah that's another thing i mean um if you spray it in or you even sprayed the wrong pre-treat sometimes they told me hey i accidentally sprayed a light pre-treatment on this uh you can't wash it you know i said that it's same thing with all that excess area you know sometimes people ask me well, what about the edges it's i can still feel the pre-treat you know once you hit that that wash that stuff what will rinse out will wash off and then if you need to, you can go ahead and hit it again, you know. Um, so that has happened because they either spray, they either oversprayed it or they sprayed the wrong pre-treatment on there. Um, and you are able to, you know, wash it and rinse it out if, if you need to. All right. I'm going to go ahead and ask while you're up. Hey, guys. What's up, man? How are you guys doing? Good, doing good. good. Thank you for the chance. Off topic caution. When you do the DTF, he said you have to uh, hover uh, to melt the powder. That's right. Yeah. And um, I do have Hotronix Fusion heat press. How that works? I, I've tried to mm. hover it. I have to hold it. So is there any technique on that? With the Fusion, huh. I think on the Fusion, you may have to... Because uh, the Fusion kind of already hovers. And for those of you that uh, don't know what, what he's referring to, we have a, there's a Stahl's heat press Fusion that pretty much works off of a compressor and, uh, you know, clamps on its own and just closes and opens up on its own without you having to close it. This one does sit a little bit higher and it kind of automatically hovers sometimes above it. If you're finding that I guess it's not melting because either we're too far away, you can increase a little bit of the heat to kind of start warm, you know, heating up a little bit more of the glue to kind of help it melt it down. Is, is that the issue right now? You're just too far away from the uh, from the heated, you know, from the platen? No, when I, I have to hold it, when I press it down, it goes all the way down. Yeah, so you have to, in this case, yeah, I think on those, you will have to kind of hold it to, for it to, um, to hover. Let me look into my fusion here. And then let me see, I'll get back to you as far as me. I got your email there. So shoot me an email real quick. And then that way I can put it on my, my to-do list for today. And let me look at that fusion for you. I'll get back to you on that one. Okay, I appreciate it. Def Thank you, man. All right. We're going to do one more question here. And then we're going to go ahead and close out. So 
Let's see. Tommy, just this isn't the question, but yes, Tommy, these are recorded every single week. Tommy's new here to the crew uh, and to, at least to these shows. So we do these every single Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Wednesday. Uh, they are recorded and they are published on our YouTube YouTube channel if you subscribe there. You see, Sandra, you said mention uh, distilled water versus hyper flush. So that is another, you know, one of the alternatives that you can use is distilled water. Um, although if you're going to use distilled water, you do want to make sure you flush it very well. One of the things about the hyper flush is it helps break down any uh, maybe buildup that's either in your pump or in your tubing. Uh, and it helps kind of break that down, get rid of it versus distilled water. You know, it's not going to help really with that part of it. But if you are going to use distilled water, make sure you pump, you know, quite a bit to make sure everything is all the way out. So that's one of the, the benefits about the hyper flush. You know, it helps break down uh, actual pre-tree buildup in your pump and your filters and your actual tubing. Cool. All right. One more question since we got Josh coming in here. Josh, go ahead, man. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah, man. Welcome. Hey, so um, about the fusion heat press. So I have one. And what I did is I put a metal block. I made a little metal block that I put in oh, there. Man. And it actually sits down just far enough. I've messed around with temperatures and the times, of course, just seeing when the crystals start to, to gel out. But, um, I mean, even just a small little metal cube you can put it in there so you don't got to sit there and hold it and you can kind of get your, your times down where you need to. And um, then what I use is a, um, a timer because your time doesn't kick on doesn't work, yep. until it actually gets to a certain point. That's so right. then what I do is just set a little timer, bam, goes off and it's good to go. Nice. So Ashfall, you know, I, that's a good one. You know, he's using, maybe put your email there. Maybe uh, Josh can send you a little photo of, of how he's making that, that uh, fusion work. You know, so you guys uh, shoot him an email. Let's help him out with that one. But that's a really good one. He's pretty much just propping, you know, the uh, the heating element, you know, with something which helps it, you know, kind of hover um, on there. So very nice. That's a good one. I like that one. All right. All right, party people. We're closing it down here. One thing before we go, though, I don't know if you all saw, but the, we're doing a Memorial Day sale right now on all inks, pre-treatments, and cleaners. You get 10% off plus free shipping on all orders 150 and above. The normal shipping threshold is 250. Um, and we're giving you 10% off plus free shipping on all ink pre-treatment and cleaner orders 150 and above. So if you need ink, just go to the site, use code Memorial Day. Real creative, right? Real original. But it is what it is. It works because you're going to remember it. So use code Memorial Day and you're going to get that deal. If you need to re-up, I recommend it. You either do it online, hit up your rep. You can do it either, either which way you want there. Also, if you guys do are at a position where you are potentially looking for conveyor dryers, we do and will be carrying, or we will and we do carry um, the Aeolus line, both the 36 inch and the 52 inch conveyor dryers. And we are going to be rolling those out in a big way in our online marketplace. So if you want, if you're interested in getting more information on those and you're at that point within your operation, uh, shoot me an email. My email is Ryan, R-Y-A-N, at omniprintonline.com. Um, and I'll get you guys details on that stuff. Uh, we don't currently have them on our store. We do sell them to, to people who ask for them, but we're going to be bringing them out. Uh, and we're excited about that. Lastly, if you don't have a direct trader dual, you need to get one because those things are freaking awesome. And I'd also love to get you guys into one of those if you're interested. And hey, if you email me and you want one, I might even give you a discount on it. But you're not going to know what the discount is unless you email me telling me you want it. So yeah. other than that, have an absolutely wonderful weekend and week. I hope it's productive and enjoy your weekend and your holiday. We'll talk soon. See you guys next week.